Well, as the mass marketing campaign for World War III continues apace, the Western corporate media keeps telling us about, quote, Russian propaganda. But what has emerged over the past couple of days is a stunning example of fabrication, hoax, and propaganda contrived by the post-coup government in Kiev in concert with the Obama administration and the New York Times. And this article appeared in the New York Times a couple of days ago, scrutiny over photos said to tie Russia units to Ukraine. They're desperate to portray the anti-government protests in eastern Ukraine as being completely orchestrated and in fact carried out by Russian special forces. Now it would be naive to think that Russians were not having some kind of influence in what's currently unfolding in eastern Ukraine, but that slam dunk of proof that Russian forces are actually involved in directing the opposition in seizing government buildings has proved to be elusive for the Kiev government, the Obama administration and the mainstream media. So instead of finding actual evidence to back up that claim, they decided just to make it up out of fresh air. So the New York Times published these photos, amongst others, which show Russian special forces here operating in Georgia in 2008. And then they show pictures from the recent uprising, the anti-government protests in eastern Ukraine, claiming that this individual is the same Russian special forces soldier seen in Georgia in 2008. As you can see from this image, the New York Times, if I just scroll up here, they actually chose to use a pixelated image of this special forces soldier when there's a clear image of him fully available. And again, with this image here, supposedly shot in Ukraine, this individual, they use a very badly pixelated image when a perfectly clear image was available. And why is that? Well, it's because obviously they're claiming it's the same guy. To all appearances, it's not the same individual. Yes, they look similar, but as the BBC notes, in this 2008 image, the Special Forces soldier has a red ginger graying beard, whereas in the image from 2014 from Ukraine, this individual obviously has a black beard that's graying, and it appears that he also has black hair. Although they look reasonably similar, you can see that the face is somewhat different, and the colour of the beard, the hair, suggests that it is indeed an entirely different person. So the New York Times, and remember this evidence was given to the Obama administration by Kiev. They said it was genuine. It was then handed on to the New York Times. They're saying that this guy is the same guy who was in the Russian special forces in Georgia, is now coordinating the anti-government activity in eastern Ukraine. It's quite clearly a different individual. Here's the quote from the BBC article that analysed these photos. This would be damning evidence indeed, but in the 2014 photos, the man's grain beard appears to be black, while in Georgia six years ago, the slimmer looking man has a reddish beard. So quite clearly, even the BBC is saying by implication that it's not the same individual. Here's the next piece of damning evidence contrived by the post-coup Kiev government authorised for release by the Obama administration and blithely regurgitated by the New York Times. Apparently, this Russian soldier seen in Crimea is the same individual as this person seen in eastern Ukraine. Now, <laughs> forgive me for not having some kind of X-ray see-through vision, but how on earth can you make the assumption that these two are the same guy when you can't even see this guy's face because he's got a full balaclava on. Yeah, this is what was printed in the New York Times as bombshell Loctite evidence of Russian troops directing the activities in eastern Ukraine. Completely ridiculous. And again, as the BBC notes, while a similar combat uniform is worn in both photos, the masks are different, as is the way the pistol is worn on his belt. <laughs> Not only that, I mean... How can you tell that that's the same guy? You can't even see this guy's face. But despite the fact that there's no actual evidence whatsoever, 
General Philip Breedlove, NATO's commander in Europe, argued convincingly last week that they must be Russian forces. And the New York Times had to issue a retraction. They said that this photo showing again the same individuals was taken in Russia. A day later, they had to admit, no, they were wrong. It was taken in Ukraine. So again, completely misleading. And here's the quote from Robert Parry's article, US State Department spokeswoman acknowledging the assertion that the photograph in the American briefing materials had been taken in Russia was incorrect. So again, this reveals the mass marketing campaign for World War III and the fact that it's based on fabrication and deception. Remember, this was created, contrived by the Kiev government, handed to the Obama administration. They signed off on it, they approved it, and it was given to the New York Times, which conducted absolutely zero scrutiny of the validity of the claims and blithely regurgitated the propaganda. Which, to us seasoned observers, is not really a surprise. Of course, the New York Times had to basically apologise for its virulent propaganda in the lead-up to the invasion of Iraq. And they also had to back off baseless claims that last August, chemical weapons attack in Syria was launched by the Assad government. Which, as Seymour Hersh recently revealed, was in all likelihood, in fact, launched by Turkey. So again, just astounding that whereas we have concrete evidence backed up by documents that US aid and the State Department and Western NGOs were directly involved in funding the Ukrainian uprising, which of course led to the empowerment of these disgusting fascist groups, the New York Times doesn't want to talk about that, but it's happy to fabricate and completely invent baseless claims about Russian special forces operating in eastern Ukraine as part of the mass marketing campaign for World War III. This is Paul Joseph Watson reporting for Infowars.com.